Good morning. I'm Eva Pilgrim in for Diana Macedo. Thanks for streaming with us in today's update. President-elect Biden is laying out his plan for the first 100 days of his presidency, vowing to get at least 100 million vaccines into the arms of the American people by April and making reopening schools a national priority, calling on Congress to devote the funding needed to make classrooms safe. Plus, Biden says he will sign an executive order the day he is sworn into office requiring Americans to wear masks on buses and trains crossing state lines and in all federal areas. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court has denied the latest attempt by President Trump's allies to overturn the election results. It took just 34 minutes for the Supreme Court to reject the request to throw out more than 2 million ballots in Pennsylvania. All 50 states have now certified their results and the Electoral College is just days away from meeting to formally seal Joe Biden's win. The UK started rolling out its first doses of the Pfizer vaccine yesterday. Tomorrow, an FDA panel will meet to pave the way for approval of Pfizer's vaccine here in the U.S. The data released so far shows it to be remarkably effective, but a White House report shows that vaccines likely won't slow the spread significantly in the U.S. until the spring, once at least 100 million Americans are immunized. In the UK, the rollout going pretty smoothly. The only pause for concern, two people had allergic reactions, but we are told both have had a history of severe allergic reactions. Health officials there now telling people who've had severe allergic reactions to hold off on getting this vaccine, at least for now. Meanwhile, in California, the state has been hit so hard by COVID-19 that an emergency alert went out to residents warning them of the that they were better off staying at home. The state is now reporting an average of 22,000 new cases daily. And one doctor who worked in New York during the first wave returned home to California in time to see cases surging again. Now he's warning the state's hospitals are on the brink. Literally within the last like four days, my my life has been flipped upside down because I have completely recommitted my priorities to the ICU because we have just been, been so overwhelmed. We're running out of space, we're running out of supplies, and we have a shortage of providers. Um, so as a result, doctors such as myself are leveraging our skill sets to work outside of our most familiar comfort zone. And I want to bring in the outgoing mayor of San Diego, Kevin Faulkner, for more. And mayor, thank you so much for being with us this morning. I know you're very busy right now. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. We keep hearing about COVID fatigue. That includes frontline workers, as we just heard. How do you get people to stay vigilant as this just continues to drag on? Well, I think that's that's the exact right word, which is which is vigilant um, and constantly reinforcing that we're all in this together. We have the same goal, keeping everybody healthy, um, doing all the right things, obviously wearing that mask, reinforcing social distancing uh, and, and really working a double time as well to not only protect lives, but to protect livelihoods. Uh, and I'm spending a lot of time on that in my final uh, days as mayor. Again, really trying to buttress our small businesses, which are the backbone of not only our economy in San Diego, but, but every city in California. Yeah, so many of those small businesses really hurt in this pandemic. That stay at home emergency alert that was issued to people across the state. Um, how are people responding to that there in San Diego? You know, there's been a lot of frustration uh, because, you know, folks are really, as I said, trying to do the right thing and we're constantly urging that, but we spent so much time on following the science and we got this new executive order. Um, it had things like closing down playgrounds. Uh, you can't take your, your family, your kids to a playground, but yet we've been saying it's okay to be outside and encouraging people to be outside. The new executive order also shut down outdoor dining, which has really been a huge staple and lifeline to not only our businesses, but from folks to be able to, to be outdoors. So there's been a lot of pushback, and I think rightfully so, when folks see some of the things that aren't based on science, because we want everybody to do the right thing and follow the science. Well, I'm curious how you think we are able to safely do some of those things. Is there an option to bring some of those things like outdoor dining and playing in playgrounds outside back anytime soon? Well, that's, that's what we're fighting for, um, because again, it's, it's protecting lives, but it's also protecting livelihoods. You have to do both. And as mayor, one of the things that I've worried the most is when we get on the other side of this pandemic, and we will, 
that we have jobs for people to go back to. Um, and, you know, there's so many Californians are hurting right now. Uh, they're, they've lost their jobs. They're not able to receive their unemployment check because of the literally the, the, the fraud that's been happening in our California unemployment department. Literally 500,000 Californians are waiting to receive those checks. So this has to be an all hands on deck effort to keep people safe, but also to keep our businesses alive as well. You have advocated for schools to reopen. Is there a safe way to do that under this current stay at home warning? I've been a very strong advocate of opening our schools. Uh, they open them for safely for teachers and safely for students. Uh, distance learning is no substitute for being inside the classroom. And that's the mantra that we hear over and over from parents all over California and, and students themselves. Uh, it really has to be focused on testing, providing the resources, the adequate testing so we can keep both, as I said, students and teachers safe. That's something that I've been pushing on here in San Diego as we develop plans to move forward because we haven't gotten that leadership uh, from the state of California. But I absolutely 100% strongly support opening our schools safely in the very near future. Some of the challenges that you're currently facing in your city, do you think there's a disconnect as the science with coronavirus has sort of changed over the last several months? You know, the very beginning, we didn't know a whole lot about it. Now yeah. we know more. Have the policies not shifted with the science? Well, I think you're right. And I think if we, if we look back to all of the uncertainty, uh, all of us, not just here in California, but nationwide, uh, when coronavirus first really was prevalent uh, back in March, uh, we have learned a lot. And one of the things that we have learned, of course, is outdoor activity is safer. It's safe to be outdoors. And that's why, as we have policies and procedures, so part of the problem in California, we've had so many and they constantly change. When you go to that back and forth, and in some cases, businesses in San Diego have been opened and closed five times, uh, that you begin to lose faith and support. And that's not what we want. We want a clear set of rules and guidelines and guidelines that reflect the science exactly what we have learned since March to now, obviously, in December. Mayor, your term ends tomorrow morning. What steps are you taking now to ensure that your successor has the resources and information to keep San Diego safe and healthy? Well, that's just exactly it. Uh, providing those resources, providing that help and the support. And we provided over $20 million in small business relief uh, from our city uh, to our small businesses. And so it's really about keeping all of that going, providing that lifeline uh, and encouraging everybody to continue to do the right thing because we're all in this together. We wanna keep San Diegans safe, we wanna keep Californians safe, uh, and that's the number one name of the game. Yeah, so many people across the country feeling the same pains that you guys are feeling there in San Diego. Mayor Kevin Faulkner, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, thank you. Well, now to the changes in family planning that are happening during this pandemic. A potential baby boom could turn out to be an egg freezing boom, with some clinics reporting an increase in interest. Zareen Shah has the story. For some women, the pandemic is creating a path to their fertility future, taking family planning into their own hands. I'm very focused on my career and creative pursuits and other things. So, um, Egg freezing has always been a nice option for me to consider. 31-year-old Allison Stuckless making the decision to freeze her eggs in September. She says she was able to take the time needed for the process. It really appealed to me that I would be able to stay at home uh, in my sweatpants and do the injections uh, myself in the comfort of my own home. Since June, New York University's Langone Fertility Center has seen a 32% increase in women freezing their eggs. The pandemic putting family goals front and center. People are realizing there's many paths to parenthood, and that's kind of aligned now with this pandemic, that people are not being forced, but potentially pushed more to pursuing kind of alternative parenthoods. The process is time consuming, but like in Stuckless's case, women now working from home are finding free time. They have the flexibility now to actually go to fertility clinics and have a consult for egg freezing or even do the process now that we're doing a lot of our consults on Zoom. The decision to freeze the fertility clock is a deeply personal choice, driving women to explore options during such a critical time. I think now is not an optimal time to be dating. It's quite difficult with social distancing and the fears of COVID. And so I think women have just decided that they're tired 
For Allison, the weight of having a family was lifted off her shoulders, making this procedure the right choice for her. Once I did, it felt very empowering to be able to do this um, for myself. Okay, so empowering is the perfect word. I had my own embryos frozen the last year. It was not easy. It definitely was not cheap, but for so many women and for me, it was the right choice. Eva? A little peace of mind. Zareen Shaw, thank you so much for that report. And let's turn now to your latest science and technology headlines. Here's Mona Kosar Abdi. In today's tech fights, a leading cybersecurity firm has been hacked. The firm FireEye reported that its own system has been breached and some of its digital tools were stolen. FireEye believes it was a state-sponsored attack. It didn't name a specific country, but some experts are blaming Russia. Facebook is expected to face a wave of lawsuits today. More than 40 state attorneys general and the federal government are uniting against the company. They're filing antitrust lawsuits accusing Facebook of trying to buy or kill off its rivals. Four of the top social media companies are under Facebook's control. Finally, Apple has introduced its new over-the-ear headphones. The AirPod Max has many of the same features as Apple's smaller models. The new headphones cost $550. No word if they work on Walkman. Those are your tech bites. Eva, we have Beats, AirPods, Air Max. I can't keep up. Back to you. I can't ever find them when I actually need them. <laughs> Thanks so much, Mona. And that does it for this ABC News Live update. I'm Eva Pilgrim in for Diane Macedo. Remember, ABC News Live is here for you all day with the latest news, context, and analysis. I will see you back here at 3 p.m. Eastern for the breakdown. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.